so pleased to be here with you tonight at Beyond Church Online. So as has already been mentioned, we had a big weekend this weekend in our Cessnock location where we officially opened the uh, community playground that we've built and we got to acknowledge my ordination as a minister. And uh, if you were at Beyond Church Online last week, you would have seen our beautiful playground in our Cessnock location and uh, we, we live streamed our service from there last week. And I'm just so excited to get to tell you a little bit more of my story in relation to pursuing ordination and building a playground because we have actually had some people ask the question, why would a church build a children's playground in the community? Why is that in the wheelhouse for a church? And there are actually a lot of reasons, but uh, because it's been my ordination weekend and, you know, my story toward ordination and my story toward us building a playground in our Cessnock location are closely linked, then I'd love the opportunity to share with you tonight my why for building a children's playground. And to do that, I'm actually going to go right back to my childhood, but don't be afraid. We're not going to be here for a really long time. But when I was a little kid, I used to often pray for wisdom. And I was blessed to have been brought up in a home um, where my parents were believers in Jesus and they were consistent in taking me and my five siblings to church every week. And so it wasn't unusual for me to be learning a lot about the Bible and being encouraged to pursue prayer. And so when I was a little kid, I heard this story from the Bible. And I've now, just in preparing this message, realized that the story that I've held onto as a really deep core truth in my own personal life all these years, since childhood is actually closely linked to our theme verse here at Beyond Church for the year. So if you're a part of the Beyond Church family already, and if you're not welcome, you can become a part of the family whenever you like by clicking the Connect Card link, and we'll give you some more next steps at the end of this message. But if you're a part of our Beyond Church family already, you would know that our theme for this year is Build, and our theme verse for the year is this. It says, God has chosen you to build His holy house. Be brave, determined, and do it. And that verse in the Bible is from a story where King David, a famous Old Testament character, very well-known king in the Bible who was known as a warrior king. So he had a call from God to help overcome a whole bunch of kingdoms to give God's people, at that time the Israelite people, a place to call their own home. Because before that, they'd been a nomadic people, no place to call their own. They'd been under oppression. They'd been under slavery for generation upon generation. And God said, enough is enough. King David, you're my servant to beat all of these other kingdoms through being a great warrior and create a home for my people. But guess what? The job of building the very first place of worship a place where people get to honour that the one true God is the one who always had a plan for them, who always made a way for them to be able to become free, for them to be able to come out of exile, for them to be able to have the chains of oppression and slavery taken from them. That job is actually going to go to your son, Solomon. And so Solomon is anointed as the next king and he's a very young man. And so my story that I learned as a child about pursuing wisdom is from King Solomon's story. Because it says in the Bible that King Solomon had the Lord appear to him in a dream. And God essentially said to him, Solomon, what do you want? Ask anything and I'll give it to you. And so Solomon, in the dream, he said to God, well, you've been such a good and faithful God to my father, David. And I just feel like a little kid running around here, not knowing what to do. And these are your people. This is a great nation and I want to govern and lead them well. So please give me wisdom. And so he didn't ask for anything else. God said, you can ask me whatever you like. And Solomon saw that he needed God's help. And so all he prayed for was wisdom. And so it says in the Bible that the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, Because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for a long life or wealth or even the death of your enemies, because I'm pretty sure that's a pretty consistent prayer of his father David, I will give you what you asked for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has had or ever will have. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, 
riches and fame. What a great promise. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands as your father David did, I will give you a long life as well. So boy, oh boy, I heard this story in Sunday school as a little kid. And what my little heart and mind heard was that if I asked God for wisdom, then perhaps he would give me riches and fame and a long life as well as a bonus. So I thought to myself, right, I'm going to pray for wisdom and pray for wisdom I have done my entire life. The book of Proverbs tells us that wise people are builders, which is also in line with our theme for this year. It says wise people are builders. They build families, businesses, communities, and through intelligence and insight, their enterprises are established and endure. So here I am. I'm growing up in my little life story, pursuing wisdom, pursuing understanding what God's unique call and purpose for me is. Why have you put me here, God? I'm praying it all the time. And I know that there are many of you who are joining into church tonight who've prayed that same prayer. And perhaps your heart is in turmoil about it even right now. And I want to speak into your situation and say that God has designed a plan and a purpose for your life that is so great. It's actually beyond your wild dreams or imagination, but we'll get to that in a moment. And so I want to pray peace over you tonight. I want to pray peace over your heart. I want to pray that you will be brave and determined and lean into all the ways that you can connect with God and what he's saying to you. You know, he will speak to you through this message tonight. He will speak to you through your life group members. He will speak to you through your team members. He'll speak to you in the faithful Jesus followers with whom you interact on a day-to-day basis. He'll speak to you through the people that you seek out and ask wise counsel from because you know that they're a faithful Jesus follower and they'll have some encouragement and wisdom to bring to you. He's going to speak to you. Don't panic about it. He's got it. And so I reached this point in my life as actually a teenager where I'm praying to God for wisdom about the person I'm going to marry because, heck, I fell in love with somebody when I was 18 years old and we were considering getting married. And so that's a very big decision to make as an 18-year-old. We got engaged when we were 18. We got engaged at our year 12 formal, Luke and I. And we got married one year to the day after when we were 19. So that's a massive decision for a young person to make. And so boy, oh boy, did I pray for wisdom. And yet I was confident to make that decision because I had been praying for wisdom my whole life and because our values and our life goals very closely aligned. We knew even at 17 and 18 years old that each of us individually, whether we were to unite our lives together on a common purpose or not, wanted to spend our lives building God's holy house. And for us, that was a great foundation for a strong marriage. So then I continue to try and figure out what it is God's called me to do with my life. So I did what all wise and smart and, you know, risk averse people do. And I completed a degree. Mine was in teaching and I became a teacher. I was a high school music teacher. But still my heart was looking for more. I felt like God had maybe more things for me to contribute. And so to cut a long story short, I ran for local council in Cessnock, where I live, in 2004. And I was elected. By some miracle, I was elected as a 23-year-old person to Cessnock Council because there was something innate in me that really wanted to be a contributor to building strong communities. I think it's a core part of how God's made me, that I really want to see healthy communities, healthy families, healthy lives that are on purpose, on mission to bring a contribution, to bring a taste of heaven to earth. And so during that time, I actually, you know, I had all of my children while I was an elected counsellor. And so I I was in the season of life where I was really into children's playgrounds, right? And there weren't any children's playgrounds in the CBD of Cessnock where I lived. So I began lobbying for council to spend money on playgrounds. I began lobbying and was successful in having my motions moved and passed so that we could um, have... Uh, smoking excluded from within 10 metres of playground equipment in Cessnock Council's playgrounds. My heart was already leaning towards this idea of building great playgrounds for children. 
Fast forward, I served eight and a half years and in 2012, I ran for mayor of Cessnock. That's a whole other long story I'm not going to go into tonight. But I was still praying really hard for wisdom about those decisions. And I was unsuccessful. I know, it's no surprise to you. I did not become the mayor of Cessnock. But God revealed himself to me in the other circumstances. And some of you need to hear this tonight. Sometimes you just need to take a step. Do you know, that was one of the hardest decisions of my life, whether I was going to, you know, kind of put myself out there, put what I thought was maybe a God thing, maybe not a God thing, didn't have any real clear confirmation to pursue that path. And I thought, well, God honors me when I take a step, when I take a step of faith. And I don't actually see it as a failure that I wasn't successful in becoming the mayor because God revealed himself to me in the circumstances around me in the months that followed. So I ran for mayor in September, had my final fourth and final child in the November of that year. And then Luke and I became the senior leaders of Beyond Church in February of 2013. So it's starting to become clearer to me the path that God's leading me towards. At that point, I started to um, outwork my vision for building strong communities by establishing a ministry through our church called the Cessnock Sisterhood at the time. And we don't run that ministry anymore, but the heart behind it was that I just wanted to, again, build strong communities. I wanted to connect women that I knew who'd been a part of the community for a long time and a growing number of women I was getting to know who were new to the community. And I wanted those two groups of people to meet. And I wanted us together to be able to work towards building something strong for our community and the generations moving forward. So during that time, one of our projects was to raise money for a children's playground in the CBD of Cessnock. And we raised $10,000. And then we didn't know what to do with it. We worked hard with Cessnock Council to kind of put that money towards a partnership project. And that money has sat in trust in an account with Beyond Church for the past several years while we tried to figure out a way of honouring the people who had made those contributions. So you can see that for the past eight years of helping to lead this church, I've been on a journey of discovering how building God's holy house is really the secret to building everything else that's good and strong and right and lasting in this world. And let me tell you how I've come to that decision. It's through the weightiness of this passage of Scripture. Have a look. It's going to be on your screen. It says this, all this energy issues from Christ. We call him Jesus. God raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven, in charge of running the universe. Everything from galaxies to governments, no name and no power exempt from his rule. And not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all, has the final word on everything, And at the center of all this, Christ rules the church. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. At last, I had discovered why I was here, to help build God's holy house, to help build the church. That's you and I, the people of God, the people to whom the rest of the world is peripheral as we are called and tasked and on mission to continue to bring the taste of heaven to earth that Jesus first showed us 2,000 years ago. We are life bringers at Beyond Church and we are tasked with the enormous and amazing privilege of bringing life to all the communities where we are. Because here at Beyond Church, we believe wholeheartedly in that verse from Ephesians and that God has planted us in our locations to fulfill our vision of growing churches, raising leaders and inspiring communities. And the best way we can do that is to live out our church culture code and become life bringers, which gets us to our new series, which is called Build Life. Because we have a culture code here at Beyond Church, and it's our life culture code. And it's an acronym. It stands for love, inspiration, fun, and excellence. And so here at Beyond Church, number one, we bring love. And here's how the Bible describes love. 
It says, love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honour. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offence. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat for it never gives up. Now, I know that's a tall order, and I'm by no means saying that you can't be a part of the Beyond Church family if you can't live up to that description of love. In fact, I was reading over this verse this afternoon, and Monday night church happens at night time, so I've had way more chances to fail at so many of those things on a day before I get to Monday night church than I do when I get to Sunday morning church. And I'm failing all the time. But we here are aspirational in wanting to grow towards building that kind of love into our relationships. And yes, we will fail as we seek to build love, but we will never take failure as defeat because love never gives up. We bring love. Secondly, at Beyond Church, we bring inspiration. We are people who dare to believe that Jesus came to bring a taste of heaven to earth and that now his Holy Spirit lives in us and empowers us to continue that supernatural work. We are dreamers with wild imaginations and we inspire those around us to believe the same power is for them. Ephesians 3.20 says, Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. You see, when I began dreaming 10 or 15 years ago about building a great children's playground in the CBD of Cessnock, the biggest my dream got, and I'm a pretty wild imaginer and dreamer, was that I could raise money through a group of people that I could gather together and over a period period of time, we could raise some money and partner with another community organization to build a playground. And yet, when God put his finger on that dream, it exploded. And our church audaciously applied for a grant for $200,000, to which we added the $10,000 we raised a few years ago. And now, beyond my wildest imagination and dreams, we've been able to build a $210,000 playground on our church property in the CBD of Cessnock to bless the community. And that still blows my mind every day. That's the kind of God and the kind of supernatural access to power that we have access to. Thirdly, at Beyond Church, we bring fun. And as I think you've heard me say already, what's more fun than a basket swing? What's more fun than coming out of church on a Sunday morning like we did yesterday and having Mr. Hamilton with the barbecue already hot and the sausages already cooked so we can have a sausage sizzle? And why is fun a part of our culture code? Well, because Jesus actually said that he came so we could enjoy life to the full. These are Jesus's words you're going to see on the screen. He said, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow. You know, when things get a bit stodgy around here, we turn them upside down to lighten the mood, to bring the fun. You know, if we're having trouble in a meeting, then we'll move the location. We'll go to a coffee shop and get a coffee and talk ourselves happy. We'll start bringing good reports and highlights of the great things that God's doing to shift the mood. We'll inflate a jumping castle and displace ceiling tiles so that we can let kids have some fun and be reminded that a life with Jesus is not boring or commonplace or fueled by duty or obligation. We bring the fun. And lastly, in our life culture code at Beyond Church, we bring 
excellence. And we have a saying around here, and it's that we're not aiming for perfection. We're aiming to do the best we can with what we've got. So you won't find perfection here, and we don't expect perfection. So just let that weight of burden fall from your shoulders. We don't expect perfection, but we are living up to the high calling of pursuing excellence, pursuing growth, and pursuing progress. And our playground isn't perfect in our Cessnock location. If you've been to see it or if you happen to get the opportunity to see it, where it sits on the property, the current layout, the current size, they're actually our plan B option. But it is excellent. We have absolutely maximised the opportunity we've been blessed with and the resources we've been given to bring something of excellence to bless our community and bring that taste of heaven to earth that we're so passionate about. We've been good stewards with the resources we've received. And, you know, that really speaks to one of what I think is my life verses. In Galatians 6 verse 4, it says this, Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given and then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. That's all God is asking of you as you seek to pursue your purpose here on earth. Mine is to build his holy house. I became ordained because it empowers me to fulfill that mission and that calling that God's given me. And I know he has a calling for you. Why did we build a playground? Because we believe that Jesus came to earth 2,000 years ago to make a way for us to be reconnected with the culture of the kingdom of heaven. And that we as Jesus followers are tasked ultimately with the calling and mission and purpose to continue that work. And so that's why we build a children's playground, because we want the whole community to see that there is a God in heaven who loved them so much that he ransacked heaven and gave himself as God with skin on, God in human form to the earth to show us a new way to live, to show us about life on purpose, to show us about life on mission, to show us what it means to have a life with calling and a future. And so I want to make that invitation to you this evening. If you've never embarked on the beginning of that journey by saying yes to Jesus, starting that friendship, then don't leave it another moment. Tonight is your night. And it's never been easier. Our team are going to drop a link to a form that you can fill out, which will help us to establish your friendship with Jesus. It'll mean you've got friends on the journey with you. That wise counsel I was telling you about. Friends that are going to help show you the way, speak life and encouragement and calling over you as you begin this new journey. And why don't you be brave, determined and do it and type yes into the comments to show us that you're there, to mark this moment so that you've physically done something, to take what you're thinking from your brain out through your hands, out of your body, out there so people can see it. Yes, this is me tonight. I know that Jesus is calling me to a life of purpose. It's not going to be a pain-free life, but it's going to be a life with access to ultimate peace, joy, love and hope because it's built on a friendship with the Prince of Peace. And then what we're going to do is because we're a family, because we're a community, we're going to pray this prayer together and mark this moment. Let's pray. Jesus, this is my decision. Today, I say yes to you. You died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life. Forgive my sin and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What an-